So right now the Blab Droids are the world's first documentary filmmakers that are entirely robots. So they go around and ask people questions and record their answers. When do you feel the most nervous? And by being very cute, they tend to get people to spill their guts and really answer hard questions quite truthfully. Initially, I was studying human-robot symbiosis at MIT for my thesis work. A runner from the Boston Marathon wandered into the lab, and he was laying on the floor telling the robot all his problems. In the past few years, we've sort of boiled down the aspects, the cuteness, the design that really caused that human-robot uh, interaction. There are a couple ways that people can engage with a robot. Uh, in places where there's not so, not so much crowded, they actually can roam around with their tracks, detect body heat, and call people over to them to pick them up, and then they start the interaction. So this version has a, has a camera inside, speaker, microphone, buttons to get the next question. They're really stupid. They don't know what you say. They don't really react to that. That's actually kind of by design. You don't want people thinking the robot's judging them in any way or making any comments about what they said because they just open their, their hearts to the robot. You don't want to say something that would discourage them from continuing it. A couple of the new applications we're looking at for the robot, one is actually in hospice care. So putting a robot in a place where people have six months or less to live and have them there to record their memoirs or record their memories in a way that camera crew would be too invasive and this guy could just be sort of sitting on their dresser, ready to go whenever they're ready to talk, ready to prompt them with questions. Obviously the cuteness was made to get people to want to help it. Things like the fact it's made out of cardboard is to make it feel very familiar and fragile. And If you're in a situation where you're, you're becoming very vulnerable with something, you have to feel like you're in control of the situation. So if this thing was big or made out of metal or something kind of clunky, you'd feel like, oh, this thing's a little bit, there's a little power over me. It also, you know, cardboard picks up a lot of character, dings and dents, and it's important not to have 100% perfection in these robots, because things that are 100% perfect, we don't believe are real. So even the voice on here is voiced by a seven-year-old boy who has a slight speech impediment. So every so often there's a little bit of an error which people find endearing, right? It doesn't. It makes you think this is this is a, a more organic, more alive thing. Do you think humans and robots can be friends? 